Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming potential winter storm from the 23rd through about the 26th and 27th. This is going to be happening in the next 4 or 5 days, so there is still a lot that can change. I'm only going to be taking a preliminary view at what some of the models are showing and kind of just discussing what could happen. Uh, this is not going to be an official forecast. My official snowfall forecast for this storm will likely come out in the next 2 or 3 days as we get closer to this event and as we get more information on what exactly could happen happen with this system so let's get right into it and let's start off with your current national weather service page we have uh in the western united states a whole slew of wind advisories watches and warnings and that's just scattered throughout parts of the rockies in the western united states we also have some winter weather advisories in the purples winter storm warnings in the pinks for parts of new mexico and colorado and even a little bit of utah as well as for parts of michigan uh west virginia pennsylvania and also into upstate new york and then those green areas uh those two different areas of green that's where you have some lake effect snow warnings uh, and that's where you are getting a lot of lake effect coming off of lake erie and uh, off of lake ontario and both of those uh, both of those areas are seeing quite a bit of lake effect even over a foot in some of those areas of lake effect over the past 24 to 48 hours so Here's what the current European model is showing, uh, and it is looking a little bit more cluttered up on the screen than what I typically have, and that's because we're also looking at the MSLP, which is showing you where you have your high pressures. For example, this area right here, this is a high pressure uh, back through the western United States. We have low pressure, and I think this will be a lot more useful, especially for those of you who are more, uh, who like to go a little bit more in depth with the weather, because we're not really focusing on what exactly is happening on the surface. We're not really concerned that this area is seeing snow and this area is seeing rain because that's the fine margins those are the things that are going to change in just a couple of days and just a, a couple of model runs but what we really want to pay attention to is the bigger features the high pressure which we have that's going to be lifting to the north the low pressure that's going to be moving out of the rockies and moving eastward and that's going to be our bigger factor now also one thing uh, that you do want to keep in mind and actually something that i pointed out yesterday is that yesterday these models were taking this uh this low pressure all the way up to Michigan and northern Michigan and then kind of riding it through into southern Canada and I said that's not likely because we're going to have that big high pressure which is actually going to be a fairly dominant one uh, up to the north and that should push these storms further south so I didn't really understand why these models were taking it further to the north and sure enough they did end up overnight adjusting further to the south and now we're looking at more of a southerly track because that high pressure kind of was identified by the models and it is going to be stronger uh, than what we were originally anticipating uh, so that's why the models did actually shift further to the south overnight so we're not dealing with that system moving up into Michigan anymore and leaving many of these areas mo um, mostly as rain uh, we're actually looking at this staying further to the south and actually giving a lot more areas some snow or mixed precipitation so and another uh, thing that I just want to kind of keep your attention on, notice this area right here. Again, this is your high pressure. This is going to be very important because that's going to be your supply of cold air. And then we have these two systems out further to the west. Uh, these are going to be back-to-back -back systems, and, most of, and both of them should have some snowfall associated with them. We're only going to focus on this first one right here uh, for the time being. But uh, pay attention to both of those because they will have an impact on exactly where this tracks. So here would be by... Uh, Sunday the 24th early in the morning and we're looking at a little bit of moisture being pulled up from Texas uh, in Oklahoma and Louisiana out of the Gulf of Mexico and it's being pushed further to the, uh, to the north we have that high pressure really dominating the eastern United States it would be a very very cold day on Sunday with many of these areas not even getting out of the 30s in a lot of these areas on Sunday so it is going to be cold ahead of the system and potentially even during the system uh, we have that warm air pushing into some of that colder air further to the north you could see a little bit of freezing rain uh, possibly uh, over some of the mid uh, the mid states uh, where you could be dealing with a little bit of mixed precipitation but the main show is going to be that snow further to the north you see how the system uh, by, by the way the system is located right here you have most of that moisture being pulled in from the south and we still have that high pressure in place further to the east. Uh, so we have a very cold air mass that's in place over the eastern United States and over the east coast. And then we have some of that snow setting up further to the north. Now again, the snow, the rain, where that sets up, that's not really important right now. It's going to be important over the next 48 hours as we get more information and as our attention kind of focuses to uh, where's the rain snow line. But right now, my focus is more of where does this track and do we have enough cold air in place? So I'm not really focusing on 
where exactly that rain snow line sets up because of course that is going to change with time uh, and you'll definitely see that move around a little bit so here would be by the 25th on monday morning we're dealing with snow mixed precipitation moving through the lower great lakes and we're seeing this continue to head further to the east now another reason that i think this is kind of a little bit of a colder situation than what the models were showing yesterday is because notice that we have this bermuda high out further uh southeast of about south carolina and north carolina we're dealing with a high pressure over here uh, and this typically is a year-round uh, thing that just stays there uh, for the most part and that's going to direct some of your uh, some of your uh, some of your wind patterns and it's going to kind of shift them around so instead of getting most of these winds coming straight out of the south and the southwest what you're actually going to see is more of these easterly winds coming off of the very cold Atlantic Ocean at this time of year so that's going to allow you to cool down the atmosphere yesterday we were looking at the system being pulled a little bit further to the north but also you had a screaming southern wind flow which is bringing in all that warmer air from the southern states and pushing it further to the north if you have an easterly flow you're going to have more moderated temperatures closer to that 32 degree mark and that's what's really helping some of these uh, areas closer to the north to the northeast coast get in on a little bit more snowfall than what we were originally looking at so here would be by tuesday the 26th and we're looking at a thin rain snow line where we're actually starting to see your low pressure transfer from over Kentucky and Tennessee offshore and as it does that it's going to be able to drag in more cold air on that western side uh, and by the way you already have your next system brewing out further to the west so you see that system transfer to a fully offshore low pressure system. It really looks like a classic nor'easter setup, a Miller B uh, type nor'easter where you have uh, that original system come from land and then transfer offshore. And that's what's going to allow some of that heavier snowfall to develop. We will also have that tight pressure gradient. So that will allow a lot of those very strong winds most likely coming off of the ocean. Uh, so that could also be a threat with this, some very gusty winds. And we will have to pay attention for that. And then the system rides out and kind of moves, gets uh, pushed out mainly because this high pressure wants to dominate again. And then here's your second system. We're not going to really talk about it, but this will move pretty much in the same direction and potentially bring some of these similar areas some more snow uh, just about two days from this system passing on. So here would be what the GFS is showing, and then we'll look at the Canadian model, and then we'll briefly look at how much snowfall they're actually putting out. So we have two different areas of low pressure. We have one up here. We have one back through California and Nevada. This is your first system. This is your second system back here. Uh, and we're only going to be focusing on that first system as of right now. So the system heads further east into the plains uh, through Colorado into Kansas and then you're dealing with uh, more of that warmer air being pulled up further to the north but also as you're getting warmer air being pulled up through Texas Oklahoma and all the way up to Kansas Missouri and some of the northern uh, plains you're also dealing with on that eastern side of this some very cold air where you have a very very cold flow because we have a very strong uh, high pressure system bringing in more of that colder air so you're already in a colder setup you have a, a colder pattern out ahead of the system uh, and then what we're going to see is that the GFS continues to develop this low pressure through Sunday and then into Monday morning we have a lot of warmer air being pushed up from the south but again it does what the European does and instead of bringing the screaming southern jet stream it actually diverts those winds off the ocean and then kicks them back further to the east because you're trying to get another low pressure to form uh, off here and that's diverting some of your wind direction further to the east so now instead of getting your very warm southern flow you're actually getting an eastern uh, easterly flow with some much colder air than what you were dealing with earlier and and that's what's going to allow some of that colder air to really overtake. Also, the high pressure has strengthened a little bit, so you are dealing with more cold air being available to the, to the system. So here would be by Monday night. Here's Tuesday morning, according to the GFS. We, we're in the middle of processing this low pressure from uh, West Virginia and Kentucky and moving that offshore. So here's your offshore low pressure system trying to form. Here's your onshore low pressure, and that one's a fairly strong one, but it will transfer, and as it does that, 
it's going to be able to drag in more of that cold air from the northern United States. And you see that play out where you actually end up seeing the system move out to the east. But because we're still dealing with some lingering moisture, most of that is in the form of snow for much of the mid-Atlantic and even parts of the northeast there. Now, here to be what the Canadian model is showing right now. So the, we have that little piece of energy up through the northern plains that came out of the Rockies. We have that cold flow through the eastern United States out ahead of the system, uh, and this would be by Saturday. So as we play this through, you continue to see more of that moisture being pulled up uh, from some of the Gulf states uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, and you're seeing more of that moisture also being pulled up, but we have, again, that completely opposite flow as you get further to the east, where you actually have a northerly flow. That's going to inhibit some low-pressure development, and as we continue this forward, you continue to see that by Sunday uh, and then through Monday, we're dealing with that cold air moving further east. We're also dealing with that low pressure moving further to the east. Here's your Bermuda high pressure system right here uh, and that's going to again divert some of your wind uh, your wind direction and also uh, the Canadian model, model by the way actually brings us further to the south because it has actually a too strong of a high pressure so what it ends up doing is leaving a lot of these areas dry and then actually give snow to the mid-Atlantic region a lot more than those areas further to the north so you see that right here you see that low pressure redevelop uh, over about Kentucky and Tennessee we're dealing with that offshore low pressure system by this point and you can see how that that snow line is actually much further south than what the other models were showing. This is mainly because the Canadian is overdoing the high pressure system up to the north. It has it around 1040 millibars, which is a very strong uh, high pressure. And I don't think it'll be that strong just because we know the Canadian does like to overdo these systems, does like to spin up uh, a little bit too much energy into them, and it does like to overdo them uh, quite a bit. So if you kind of subtract a little bit from that and you kind of lower those values you would expect that this would be a little bit further north than what you're dealing with although it is still a possibility and of course the Canadian is right from time to time uh, and we should definitely take its uh, opinion into factor and kind of kind of keep it in the back of our minds that that is a possibility that this does slide further south and the main brunt of this storm is northern Virginia Maryland Delaware area instead of Pennsylvania New Jersey New York Connecticut area so there is definitely a lot of stuff and a lot of factors that can still change with this and you see that slide out further to the east and then here's your next system which the Canadian also develops into a similar nor'easter like setup so here are some of your snowfall totals from some of these models, and it's not really important to look at the exact totals. I'm not looking at, oh, this area is getting 3 inches and this area is getting 6 inches. I'm more looking at uh, a better way to visualize where was the footprint of the storm. You can see that the heaviest areas on the GFS were in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and also another area for Illinois, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Uh, and then if we look at what the European model was showing, a lot more widespread. I think this is a little bit overdone, but still you're looking at that heaviest band of snow from southern New England into southern Michigan uh, and just about that area with potentially a higher uh, area of snowfall up to a foot according to the uh, European model. Again, I think that's a little bit overdone and of course we're going to refine those snowfall totals as we get closer to the actual event. And then here would be what the Canadian model is showing and you can see these areas further to the north that were getting hit hard don't really get hit hard anymore and you end up seeing that biggest area of snow actually further to the south into the mid-Atlantic uh, and into some of those areas in the uh, central Appalachia. So uh, it's a little bit further south than what the other models were showing and then you see another area of decently heavy snow back through the midwest and the great lakes so that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications if you did enjoy and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye